Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe out there. I'm in the office today because we get to look at the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves in the past week. Let's check them out. So I know a lot of us are working from home these days. Now the advantage of that, of course, is we've got a lot of time on our hands to actually keep our knives in tip top shape, maybe do a little bit of modification if you want. To that end, I want to show you a couple of replacement knife scales we have here. Um, we actually got a huge selection at the Knife Center, but the two I've got right here, we've got new VZ grips for the ZT350, as well as smock grips for the Spyderco smock folder, actually made by Kevin Smock himself, or Smock Knives anyway. And these are just, again, like I said, a representative sample, uh, but there's it's a great way to pimp out your knives, maybe change the look up, uh, do a little bit extra, make it your own. These VZ grips, especially for the 350, I really like. The 350, of course, if you remember, has a uh, just a flat G10 scale. Well, these VZ grips have a little bit of contouring going on, and that's why I picked uh, this particular one, because you can see those layers where you've got a little bit of a swell, a pinch down here. They're really cool. Bunch of different colors available, uh, a bunch of different patterns as well. We've got a uh, like a diamond checkered version, a stippled version, and all of them come in right about 59 bucks right now. The smock scales also come in a number of different colors. We've got uh, an OD green and a black, as well as this red and a really cool toxic green. If you you know if you're not into the carbon fiber of the original, these are a great thing to swap in. This one has a, a, a diagonal milling pattern, but we've also got one that has a few more holes going on, kind of like a little bit of a Swiss cheese look going on. These are a little bit more. These come in at 85 bucks, uh, but again, really cool and made by Smock Knives themselves. We'll make sure to leave links in the description where you can get your hand on, hands on these, and we'll make sure to link you to all of our replacement knife scales. We've got cool stuff for the Becker knives, a bunch of Flytanium models for a ton of different knives out there, all really cool and very well built. All right, next up, and one I'm particularly excited about, the new Revo knives, which is a subsidiary of BRS, have now landed here at the Knife Center. We've got a bunch of new models. My favorite one, though, is this particular one, which is called the Ness. And for those of you out there that know me, and those of you who've watched uh, a few of the videos where I may have shown a Nessmuck, I am a big Nessmuck fan, but you don't really see that too often in a folding knife form, but that's what you've got here, and I think they've really nailed the design. Blade shape is a little bit over three and a half inches. We've got D2 steel with a nice stone washed finish. Again, if you guys have been paying attention, that's one of my favorite finishes. Probably my actual favorite finish out there. Love it. Love the blade shape. It's very graceful and it marries very nicely with the handle design they've come up with here. We've got G10 scales, a liner lock, and it's even got a deep carry clip. And this is actually one that I've been carrying since SHOT Show when I was able to get my hands on one then. I really enjoy the way it carries. It slips into the pocket very nicely. It's a very useful blade. It's just, oh, it's very cool. I gotta love a Nesmuk and you gotta love a folding version of it. Price isn't too bad. We come in uh, somewhere between 60 and $70. I don't have the actual price here in front of me, uh, but we'll make sure to leave links in the description. You can see the up-to-date pricing right there. All right, next up, we've got another Revo knife and this is called the Recoil. And this is a very workhorse oriented knife. Very ungainly almost when you first see it. It's definitely got kind of an unconventional shape, but when you hold it, it immediately comes apparent what they're trying to do here. The blade kind of kicks down a little bit and you've got sort of this, uh, this sheep's foot or modified sheep's foot style of tip here. And it's gonna work very well, I think, as a utility knife on the job site, whether you're cutting through cardboard, maybe cutting carpet or drywall even. It's just, it feels very powerful in the hand, especially with the way the blade comes down. You're gonna be able to pierce with that tip very nicely and I like rip through some material. Enhancing kind of that workman-like vibe, we've got very big thumb studs here. They're actually synthetic, they're not metal. And they've got a nice uh, sort of a scoop out in the middle. So even if you're wearing uh, work gloves and even if they're not like the best fit of work gloves, you're still gonna be able to, to fire that out no problem. This is a manual opening knife. It comes with ball bearings in the pivot. In fact, that, uh, that Ness does as well. We've got a single-sided pocket clip here, not as deep carry, but that's gonna make it easier to get out of your pocket. Again, especially if you're wearing work gloves. And this is a G10 version, or sorry, let me point to the right side, G10 version on the front, couple different colors available, and a stainless steel frame lock on the back. 
The steel here is 9CR stainless, so unlike D2, uh, it's not going to corrode quite so easily. D2 is not going to corrode super easy. It's kind of a, a semi-stainless steel to start with. But if you prefer easier upkeep and easier sharpening, this 9CR is going to do the job a little bit, little bit better for you. Now, despite what I was saying earlier, the fact that this feels like a real powerful cutter in the hand, they actually managed to keep the geometry fairly thin as well, so you can still slice with it. We've got a hollow grind here, a little bit of a swedge going on. You know, it's just going to be a really effective knife, I think. And again, I'm sorry I don't have the, uh, the exact price here in front of me. I think it's somewhere between 60 and 70 bucks again. But again, we'll leave links in the description where you can see the up-to-date pricing. All right, so this next one I actually put up right next to it because it kind of reminds me a little bit of that BRS. We've got a new version of the K-Bar TDI knife. This is the TDI Investigator. TDI, of course, is the Tactical Defense Institute, and this was designed by John Benner, the guy who founded that school. And the, the whole line of TDI knives was designed to be sort of a last option resort for law enforcement, but I still think they're, they're really great utility knives on top of that. This new Investigator is sort of a little bit of a, of a scaled down version, scaled down even further than the standard version. We've got almost a two and three quarter inch blade, OS 8 steel. Nice drop point profile with a hollow grind, as well as that kind of black traction coating. Doesn't really need that for corrosion resistance, but it is going to keep reflections down if you're concerned about that in sort of, you know, a tactical environment. But with a blade shape like that, it's going to be very useful for opening boxes, packages, letters, that sort of thing. Just a good EDC utility knife. And despite the smaller size, I f the handle really feels locked in. You know, I, it's technically only a three finger grip but it's wide enough and contoured or shaped in such a way that it feels super secure in the hand. I don't have any worries at all or any concerns at all about the amount of grip you actually get here. Those handles are nylon and the sheath is a hard plastic. Comes equipped with this, uh, this also plastic belt clip. Comes with a little bit of a J-hook on the bottom so that you can slip it on and off your belt uh, at will, but it's not gonna accidentally come off too easily. Of course, you can spin this around, use a couple of the different holes if you want. And the hole pattern here is actually small tech lock compatible if you prefer that type of locking system instead. Price on this comes at about 37 bucks right now. And despite its small size, this thing is still going to pack quite a punch. I mean, it's just so intuitive to use. With that kink in the blade there, wherever you point it, it's going to go right where you want it to go. All right, those last couple knives are all about getting down and dirty and on the affordable end to boots. We're going to go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum right now. We have a brand new design from Shiragorov. Now, this company doesn't come out with a brand new design all too often, but when they do, you definitely got to take notice because their construction is just so impeccable. These are wonderfully built knives, and they carry the premium to go with it. This new model comes in at 1100 bucks right now. This knife is called the Quantum, and as you can see, we've got this upswept blade profile, and we've got M390 blade steel here, flat grind, with kind of a stonewashed finish going on. Now, one of the things I've always appreciated about every Shiragorov I've ever picked up are the edges on these blades. The stock itself is not super thin, but they consistently manage to get a very, very thin edge, and it's very precise the whole length, from the heel all the way to the tip. Now, there's a lot of companies out there that do a good job with their edges, but I've never been as impressed with anyone more than I have with these Shiragorovs. I can't stress just how, it's one of those little details. You're not gonna really be able to see it on camera, I don't think, but in person, it's just that one little kind of 0.1 of a percent that separates a really good knife from a truly great design and a truly great constructed knife. The handles, of course, are titanium. This is a titanium frame lock flipper after all. We've got some nice uh, subtle lines and you get a little bit of the, uh, the Shiragorov logo here at the end because you don't actually have the blade marked, but it's not super shouty on the handle. So even if someone, if you have it laying out, it's not going to be big and gaudy. It's nice and subtle. Opposite side, there's your frame lock. We've got a nice milled titanium pocket clip there. Milled backspacer as well with a hidden lanyard point. Not, eh, I shouldn't say hidden. It sticks out a little bit, but it is pocketed. So it flows through the handle very nicely. Before I unlock it to show you the flipping action, I want to show you these, uh, these scallops here on the lock bar. They've got some nice finely machined lines, really precise. They look very good and they add a little bit of texture too. So, you know, you're not going to slip off the titanium when you try to unlock the knife. Now you can open it two ways. Of course, we have the flipper and it, the action is just resounding. Or you can also open it without flipping it. 
as you can see, we've got a, a dual depression, twin depressions on each side. It's not a, a full thumb cut out, but you've got this, this fair amount of steel removed right there that can function kind of as a thumb stud or a blade cut out. Now there's not a lot sticking out. So at least for me with, I've got you know a really big thumb, I have to kind of pinch it open a little bit first and then can complete the action with my thumb. But it's a good option if you don't want to be so, uh, so flashy when you're opening the blade. But you know, still, even if you do open it more deliberately, this is definitely going to make an impression when you do open it. All right, if you want premium, but you don't have that kind of money to spend, we've actually got a couple new designs from Best Tech this week. This first one is the Kombu Costa, and the Kombu part of that actually refers to the designer. Now let me scroll here because I know I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong. It's a Polish designer. Kombu is his nickname, but the actual name is Grabarski Gregors. There's a few extra Z's in there, so I may be missing some silent sounds, but that's all right. Uh, but this is the Kombu Costa, and it looks really cool. Now the prices on these start at just under 300 bucks, and there's a few different options available, and the prices vary just a little bit based on that. Got M390 blade steel. This particular one has a really nice hand rubbed finish on the grinds. I really like it. Really cool profile to it that accentuates the handle quite nicely. And it is a ceramic bearing based flipper, as you want it, would expect from Best Tech at this price point. And just like that Shiro, we've got a flipper as well as a thumb opening option as well. But the flipping action, very nice indeed. Handles are titanium. We've got some nice milling here going on as well, and a marbled carbon fiber inlay. It's also got a really nice backspacer design going on with a few different scoops taken out so it's not just a flush backspacer. You've got something interesting to look at there as well. Nice milled titanium pocket clip as well, right side tip up only. And as far as the options I mentioned, you can get this with a couple different blade finishes. I think it's a, uh, a two-tone satin uh, is available as well as the hand rubbed finish. Uh, we've also got the same two options with a gold anodized frame. But if you want to step up, there is uh, a version of this with the gold anodized frame and the marbled carbon fiber inlay that you can get with a damascus steel blade. And there's also a satin version with the damascus steel blade, and that one comes with Timascus inlays. And the prices on those go from about 500 to a little bit over 750, uh, respectively. So I know I promised you uh, cheaper, and, then, and definitely on the high end, it's not quite as cheap. But again, base models of these start at just under 300. We've actually got another kombu knife from Best Tech. This is the Webra. It's another titanium frame lock flipper. This one comes in a little more affordable at 255. And just like the, uh, the Costa, there's a few different variations available in terms of color and blade finish. I've got the bronze anodized version here with the black and stone wash finish. That blade is M390, comes in about three and a half inches, and it's definitely a little more agile than some of these larger blades. You can kind of get it into some tighter spaces if you need to. Again, we've got a thumb cut out as well as the flipper. Action's quite good. In terms of this flipper, you can, well, let's see. Oh yeah, it's actually fairly easy to get out with just my thumb there. I don't need to pinch it open. So that works really well. I think this design is, of these two, is definitely the more elegant one. It's not quite as flashy or ostentatious. And that blade profile is just gonna work very nicely. But it's definitely gonna be good for everything you need day to day. Opening your boxes, your packages, your letters, that sort of thing. Now I wouldn't really envision this being put to super heavy use, although it's certainly built well enough that it could handle it. This is just your elegant uh, gentleman's knife, your executive flipper, whatever you wanna call it. One of the nice things I like that they did with the flipper action here is you've got this, uh, this scoop out in the handle here with some nice, nice knocked off edges there so that as you flip it, it's gonna be very comfortable on your, on your finger right there. I almost said thumb. There's a lot of nice milling going on on the handle, so it's certainly not boring to look at. And on this, uh, this bronze anodized version, we've even got uh, some contrasting color. We've got blue on the pocket clip and on the backspacer. So if you're looking for an executive knife, this is certainly gonna be a good option, but if you want something a little bit cheaper still, I do have another new option right here for you. This is the new Bear Ops Rancor 8 Executive Flipper. Bit of a smaller knife, as you can see, the blade here is about two and three quarters of an inch. And the price is a lot cheaper too. This one comes in at 150 or right about, right under 150 right now. This is made in America. We've got an S35VN blade. Again, nice two and three quarter inch length. So it's gonna come in under three inches for some of you folks out there that might have some, uh, some knife regulations that you uh, need a smaller blade for. This is gonna be a great little option. In addition to that nice narrow blade, we've got a very thin profile overall with these stonewashed titanium handles. It's gonna carry nice and easily and fairly deeply too with this uh, almost deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible for the left or the right side. 
FrameLock provides the, the platform here and the lockup is nice and good. Nothing to complain about at all right there. And if you prefer a slightly different look, you can get it with a front scale of carbon fiber instead of the titanium here. In that version, the pocket clip is not reversible, so just keep that in mind. You won't be able to carry it as easily on the left side, but you're not gonna have the, uh, the cutout there as well. So it has a little bit of a cleaner look. And that one's just a few bucks more, coming in about 149 right now. All right, while we're on the subject of titanium flippers, I've got one more. It's not a frame lock though. I've got a new version of the Hinderer Knives Neves Balasong. This one comes in 325, made right here in America, as you would expect. S35 VN blade with a working finish and the Sponto profile. That working finish is essentially a really heavy stone wash that looks really good, really nice and aggressive. And the handles, even though they're anodized blue, they're not too ostentatious either, I don't think. They've got a stone wash finish as well, and they're calling this a uh, battle blue finish. It's got a sort of a diamond checker pattern going on, kind of like the old gun grips. And as you can see on the bottom of these handles, we've got a couple screws and a small plate. That's because these are going to fit your hinderer pocket clips that are out there. So if you want to add a clip to this, any of those, uh, those standard hinderer clips are going to work just fine. And the action, of course, is quite good. We've got bronze bushings here in the pivots. They're rock solid. They don't feel like they're going to flex away on you at all. It's just a really premium option for a ballast song that at the end of the day is not crazy expensive for this type of American made quality. You can certainly spend a lot more on a ballast song and not get something that's that much better than what you get right here. All right, I'm gonna hold this one up backwards first because this is one you gotta guess who the designer is. It should be pretty instantly recognizable. This is a Bastinelli Creations design made in collaboration with Fox Knives. That blade shape is instantly recognizable as a Bastinelli thing, absolutely comes in, uh, well, this whole knife comes in about 190 right now. It is Italian made with N690 steel. Blade length about three, a little bit under three and a half inches, actually. Cool, technically you'd call that a Tonto profile, but you definitely have a lot uh, a lot more going on here at the spine treatment. What's going on here is you're, you're essentially getting a dropped edge. The edge itself is more in line with your fingertips or your, uh, your knuckles, I should say, rather than being raised up. But you still have this very fine, very powerful piercing profile going on because it's not a super broad blade overall when you take that drop here into account. But it's got a flat grind and a nice swedge here. It's gonna pierce well. It's gonna just, it feels like it's gonna move through some things very nicely. The thumb ramp here provides a good place to rest. It definitely has a, a good bit of traction without being sharp because the spine is crowned in addition to being jimped. So again, you lose some of those real sharp edges sometimes, that you can sometimes get. Stonewash titanium for the handles. With your, uh, your, with your standard frame lock there and a nice deep carry pocket clip going on. That's gonna hold it nice and out of the way. And in addition to that, in addition to not being super visible when it's in your pocket, despite this really kind of out there and aggressive blade shape, when it folds up, it doesn't take up a lot of room at all. It really flows in very nicely with that handle shape. So you don't even know like the badassery that's about to be uh, unleashed when you flip it open. I really like this particular version. It's got a green canvas micarta scale on the front, a little bit of contouring. It's not just a, a flat slab on there, which is quite nice. Uh, but there's also another version that comes with uh, black G10 handles and a black stone wash finish. And that's about 10 bucks more, I wanna say. Uh, oh, not even that. That one's about 180 or 197 right now. All right, sticking with some Italian stuff right now, we've got a new knife from Viper. This is called the Novus. This model right here, uh, it's on the low end of the spectrum, at least in terms of the lineup, comes in at 137 right now, and the price goes up to about 170, depending on which option you get, and I'll talk about those here in a second. Blade Steel is M390 here again, and he got a really strong profile going on. The tip is kind of abruptly clipped off here, or it seems abruptly, abruptly clipped, but what that's gonna do just kind of just like that recoil from earlier, you're gonna have a very sturdy working profile going on, a very strong tip, very powerful cutting action going on here, I think. And in a, the, uh, the other benefit of that being clipped off like that, this comes in at just a hair under three inches when you measure from the tip to the handle scale there. So again, it's gonna come in under that three inch mark for those of you out there where that's important. Nice flat grind on here, nice crown spine as well. Again, very something you see a lot from the Italian uh, manufacturers out there. It looks nice. It's something you can visually appreciate. And it's also very comfortable because you don't have any kind of right angles or even something approaching a right angle there on the spine. It's going to be very easy to, to really power down on without hurting your thumb. 
Now, as far as opening action goes, this is a one hand opener. We've got a front flipper here. We do have ball bearings, which should make it a little easier to rotate once you get it going. Now, I, I admit I'm not super good at front flippers most of the time. I can't really, I've not been able to get this one to really flip open, but I can certainly slow roll it open there, no problems. Other people in the office though that I've handed this to are able to flick it uh, real easily. So, you know, don't take uh, just the way I'm able to do it uh, as gospel, you know, take it with a grain of salt. This particular one has micarta handles. There's a couple different colors available as well as a backspacer here, which is also rounded over much like the spine and a couple of liners because we've got a liner lock there as well. It even comes with a nice leather uh, pocket case as well because there's no pocket clip on here as you can see. So you can flip slip that right in there, throw it in your pocket, you're good to go. As for more premium options, there are there is a carbon fiber version available. And in addition to that, there's a few bolstered designs that have either uh, some exotic wood or carbon fiber here at the back with titanium bolsters. And they've actually got some really cool machining going on. Makes it look uh, a little bit like it's almost got some hand hammered accents in there. Looks really cool. And those are the ones that get up there uh, in the 160 to 170 range. All right, next up, we've got a new fixed blade. Uh, this is a new variation or a new addition to Castrum Safari Mini Hunter series. Now, this is a very small but still useful knife. It was actually designed by Alan Wood, who of course is very famous for his, uh, for his wood lore bushcraft knife pattern. Been around the block a lot, one of the premier UK uh, custom knife makers, so it's really cool to see uh, some few collaborations out there where you can actually get your hands on one of his designs without paying an arm and a leg because this comes in at 90 bucks right now. Not bad at all. Blade steel is 12C27 and the length is about two and a half inches. Nice hollow grind on that drop point profile. But what's really nice is the handle kind of kicks up compared to the line of the edge. So you're able to get down there, get real close to something that you're working on without your knuckles banging into it too much. Uh, I, I usually say cutting board, but this is a pretty small knife to be doing some cutting board with. But if you're getting in, uh, this is a hunter, so getting around near bone or any of that sort of thing, you're gonna have a little bit of extra clearance right there. The handles on this one are olive green G10, but the coolest thing about them, we've actually got a tapered tang here, which is something you only usually see on, on either custom or indeed very premium knives. So the fact you can get that made in Sweden too, not a, uh, not a Chinese import for just 90 bucks, I think is really cool. Comes with a Kydex sheath here with a nice leather thong attached. So you can carry that around your neck quite easily. It's got a drain hole here uh, at the top, but if you're carrying it uh, neck style, nothing's gonna drain out that way. But the holes here, you've got uh, a series here, three. They've actually done this very cleverly. The two here, you can use uh, a small tech lock and the two outside ones will fit a large tech lock. So you have that option. You can add one in uh, and throw this on your belt if you prefer. Now this next one definitely looks familiar. You may be saying, hey, that's not a new knife. This is the stainless steel Mora knife, uh, or sorry, Mora Knief, Mora Garberg. Uh, we've got new versions of the stainless steel and the carbon steel version that now have the, uh, the simpler sheath that Mora is more known for rather than the leather sheath or the multi-mount sheath. It's just your simple, uh, simple plastic unit there ambidextrous works very well either way clicks in very nicely takes up virtually no space on your belt you've got the belt loop here which i'm not going to click it all the way on but it'll actually click positively into place either side stainless one comes in uh, about 74 the carbon one about 10 bucks more than that um, so you can get your hands on this knife for a little bit less money than the other sheath options right now but no matter which one you pick, it's a solid bushcraft knife. We've got a full tang that extends here out the back. So you can use that for thumping on things or as a scraper. You've got that excellent Sandvik steel, nice spine that's crisp enough to strike a fire starter and that very keenly ground Scandi grind that Moras are of course very known for. And the handle here definitely fills up the hand. You've got a lot there to work with so that you can really carve for hours without a whole lot of fatigue at all. I've got one more new Mora here. I'm not gonna take it out of the clam pack here. Uh, you may remember last year there was a new cork handled Mora. This is a new variant or new addition to the cork handled series that comes in at uh, 27 bucks. And the advantage of that handle is this knife can actually float in the water. So really good option for those of you who are gonna use this out boating, fishing, something like that. Um, you know, it, it pays to kind of have a disposable knife when you're out there anyway, because if you drop it, it's gone. This is still very affordable at that $27 price point, but you're gonna be able to uh, potentially get your hands back on it a little easier if you do drop it. 
Now, the previous version had a blunted tip and partial serrations, or it might have been fully serrated. This version is a more, uh, more traditional Mora style blade. You've got your clip point shape with a Scandi grind going all the way up, just a plain edge. Really cool, and I really like the, uh, the high-vis color here as well. Gonna make it easy to find on land or on the water. What's nice about this one compared to some of those other Moras though, it's gonna be hard to see through the packaging. I do apologize, but the blade is a lot thinner than, than, than many of those come. It's probably only, let's see if they have it on the back here, 1.4 millimeters thin which it's gonna slice very nicely. If you're using this while fishing, it's gonna work better uh, as a little bit of a game knife or slicing through your fish, doing your fillet duties. And you can kind of see that, uh, see how thin it is by the, the actual height of the Scandi grind on it. It's not as high up as, you know, this guy right here, which is about twice as thick. That's about, I think that's a three, three and a half millimeter blade there. But really cool, definitely check it out if you're gonna need a knife on the water. All right, next up, we've actually got a kitchen knife, or this is actually just representative of two whole new lines from Boker. We've got the Core series, which this is a part of, and that comes with a walnut handle, as well as the Core Professional series that comes with a synthetic handle if you don't wanna deal with uh, the natural material there. The walnut is very comfortable though, and as you can see, there's no tang and no rivets anywhere which really only increases that comfort. They're able to have no seams whatsoever and really make something that's gonna fit very nicely and feel nice and warm in the hand. This is the chef knife model, as you can probably see, comes in a little bit over a hundred bucks. Uh, so if you're looking for something that's uh, an alternative to some of the other premium German brands, definitely check this one out because this one is made in Salingen, Germany. This is not uh, one of their imported, or I guess technically here it's imported, but it's not one of their uh, their Asian or South American manufactured knives. But each of these, both the uh, the Core and the Core Professional come with a wide variety of different patterns. You've got your paring knives, your Santokus, bread knife slicers, whole nine yards. Pretty much whatever style of uh, kitchen knife you're looking for, or at least whatever style of uh, Western style kitchen knife you're looking for, you're gonna be able to find it in addition to those Santoku options. But what I like about this over some of the other German brands out there, one, you don't have a bolster coming down to the edge, which I appreciate that because as you sharpen this over time, you're not gonna worry about that bolster sticking down and maybe kind of preventing contact with the cutting board quite so much. This particular one has a real nice profile, feels good, as I said, in the hand, and the spine is crowned over very nicely as well. For Again, for comfort, both when you're doing your standard pinch grip, as well as anything where you're placing your hand here out towards the tip. Now the steel here, it is a stainless steel, and it's X50 CR MOV 15. What you need to know about that is that's essentially the same type of stuff that you know Wusthof and Victorinox uses in their kitchen knives. So it's it's nothing super remarkable, but is a, it is a solid workhorse steel that's definitely time proven out there in countless kitchens around the world. All right, that's all the new stuff I've got to show you just now. What did you think? Make sure to let us know your favorites down in the comments. And if you wanna get your hands on any of these cool knives, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program, because if you're gonna buy a knife, you might as well earn some free money in the process. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.